Hello and welcome back to another CRT and ICT concepts video. In this episode, we will dive into a crucial but often overlooked topic, time frame alignment and selection. Although rarely discussed, this concept is one of the cornerstones of building a sound and logical trading framework. No matter how strong your technical analysis is, without proper time frame alignment and selection, you won't be able to analyze charts with optimal accuracy. In this series, I'll thoroughly explain everything related to time frame alignment and selection, so by the end of the video, you'll have a clear understanding of how it works. What makes CRT so effective, with its remarkable precision in positioning, is this very concept. Time frame alignment ties all other trading strategies together, making them cohesive rational and ultimately more successful. Now let's get into it. First, let's talk about time frame selection. This concept will help you understand the purpose of each higher time frame, allowing you to use them more effectively and in a way that aligns with your trading style and mental approach. Starting with the higher time frames, the first one is the monthly chart or monthly time frame. The monthly time frame is primarily used for position trading. Position trading involves trading with ranges on the monthly chart. However, since it takes an entire month to form a single candle, most traders don't have patience or the ability to wait for setups that could take years to materialize. Although the monthly time frame is mainly for positional trading, that doesn't mean that intraday traders and swing traders won't benefit from it. We can still use it to establish a higher time frame directional bias and draw on liquidity and gain insights into future potential price movements. While we'll explore this concept in more depth later, the key takeaway is that the monthly time frame helps us get a broader market perspective, even if we aren't position traders. Position trading is typically done by large institutions, hedge funds, and other big players with significant liquidity. These traders use the monthly chart due to issues like spread slippage, but since we're retail traders, focusing on intraday, short-term, or swing trades, our primary concern lies elsewhere. Moving on, another key time frame is the weekly chart. The weekly chart is mainly used for swing trading, where trades may form once or twice a month based on weekly ranges. Even as an intraday trader, we can still use the weekly time frame to refine our bias and identify draw on liquidity on the higher time frame. Using a top-down approach, we start by analyzing the monthly time frame, then refine our view on the weekly chart. This allows us to form a well-rounded directional bias that guides our decisions as intraday or short-term traders. As I mentioned earlier, following a specific direction on the lower time frame doesn't mean we'll always trade strictly in that direction. On lower time frames, we may even take counter-trend trades. However, in general, if you align your trades with the direction of the weekly and monthly time frames, you'll mostly encounter high probability setups. You might be wondering why I'm emphasizing this, but there is a solid reason behind it, which I will explain shortly. Before that, let's review the rest of the timeframes. Next, we have the daily chart, which happens to be my favorite timeframe. The reason that the daily timeframe is so significant to me is that it serves both intraday traders and short-term traders. Whether you're a short-term swing trader or intraday trader, the daily chart will help you identify the current draw on liquidity and establish the correct directional bias. To do this, you'll use concepts such as data ranges, dealing ranges, CRT, market profiles, key levels, and more. All of these tools come together in a logical framework, which I've already shown. We'll go over these concepts in future discussions of this series. The daily chart is one of the best timeframes for intraday 
and short-term traders. As an intraday trader, your goal is to trade within the range of the daily candle and position yourself in line with its directional bias and draw on liquidity. Now, moving on to the 4-hour time frame. This is often used for intraday trading or scalping. As an intraday trader, much of your analysis will be conducted on this time frame. You'll identify higher time frame key levels here and you'll align them with CRT on the 4-hour chart. This time frame will become a core part of your strategy, so it's essential to master its intricacies and subtle details. Finally, another crucial part of selecting a time frame is defining your trading model. My role is to explain each model in detail so you can become familiar with them. From there, it's up to you to decide which approach or trading style suits you best. Personally, I prefer intraday trading where trades are held for just a few hours. This suits my style, but it might not be the same for everyone. It's essential for you to experiment with different trading styles to find the one that aligns with your behavior and optimizes your trading performance. Trying out various approaches is key because without doing so, you won't know how you'll respond to different styles. This also helps you determine what works best within your trading model. Let's now explore the different types of traders. The first is the position trader who primarily focuses on the monthly range or ranges within a monthly time frame. As mentioned earlier, this style is typically reserved for hedge funds and institutions with significant liquidity. Retail traders usually don't engage with this approach as it can take years for setups to materialize. The second type is the swing trader who operates within the weekly range or on a weekly chart. For swing traders, setups generally take several weeks or even months to form. While this style can be effective, it tends to perform best during expansion phases on the monthly chart, although the market often remains in a ranging phase. Next, we have short-term trading, where traders focus on the daily chart. The goal here is to trade the daily ranges within a weekly range. To explain, each candle represents five daily candles or five trading days. As a short-term trader, your task is to trade within the weekly range, using the daily chart as your higher time frame, while profiling and entering positions on the 1R chart. This alignment is considered ideal for short-term trading. Moving on, we come to day trading or intraday trading. An intraday trader works within the daily candles range. It's important to differentiate this from short-term trading. While short-term traders trade ranges on the daily chart, intraday traders focus solely on the range of a single daily candle. As an intraday trader, your goal is to capitalize on the daily range, entering and exiting trades within the same day without holding any positions overnight. Finally, there is scalping, an aggressive form of trading. Scalpers trade the hourly range on the one minute or the five minute. This style is fast paced with relatively small profit margins compared to the other approaches. Scalping requires quick decision making, fast executions, and a solid grasp of analysis. Let's start with the monthly time frame, focusing on this specific section of price action. While it may seem precise, the movement actually took place over a year and a half, covering a range of around 2,000 pips. The monthly chart is the foundation tool for analysis, regardless of whether you're a swing trader, short-term trader, or intraday trader. It's where you'll establish your directional bias using various concepts, which we will explore. Additionally, the monthly chart strengthens your conviction in both your directional bias and your draw on liquidity. It plays a crucial role in guiding your trading decisions and analysis. 
Although the monthly chart moves at a slower pace, it provides a high degree of precision and accuracy. This accuracy is largely due to the clear direction derived from the monthly price action. The monthly chart serves as a cornerstone of our trading strategy and top-down analysis. We begin with the monthly time frame to identify a draw on liquidity or directional bias, which we then refine on lower time frames such as the weekly or daily charts. To determine this directional bias on the monthly chart, we employ various concepts like quarterly shifts, seasonal tendencies, dealing ranges, key levels, CRT and others. Quarterly shifts and seasonal tendencies in particular help us build a narrative while the other concepts further shape our directional bias and trade ideas. As an intraday trader, you may not always trade in line with the monthly directional bias or draw on liquidity. Markets don't move in straight lines. They include ranging phases and retracements before reaching their targets. For example, even if the monthly chart indicates a specific draw on liquidity, it could take a week for the price to fully reach that level. During this period, the market will display different profiles on the lower time frame, ranging, retracing and expanding. Each profile offers trading opportunities even in counter directions, as retracements on the higher time frame may appear as expansions or reversals on the lower time frame. The concept here is that on the monthly time frame, you'll use these principles to establish a long-term directional bias and draw on liquidity. You'll stick to this bias unless there's a significant shift in market dynamics or price action on the lower time frame that suggests otherwise. You can also use the bias as a risk management filter. For example, if you identify an intraday or short-term setup that aligns with the monthly directional bias, you could consider it an A plus or high probability setup. On the other hand, if the setup is counter to the monthly bias, you might treat it as a lower probability trade, an A setup, where you can still take the trade, but with adjusted risk management. Now let's dive into the price action on the monthly chart. While there are various protocols and nuances for correctly identifying CRT, the core idea is that each candle represents its own range. When a CRT or typical range is purged, the draw on liquidity shifts to the opposite side. Another key principle is that when a candle is engulfed, it becomes a significant level for future price action. Price often reacts to these levels down the line. Keeping this in mind, let's analyze the price action here. We see that the price took out the low of a candle and then closed above and within that candle's range. When this happens and price closes inside the range before reaching the opposite side, the next candle's opening sets our bias and the draw on liquidity towards the opposing end of the range. In this case, we would start targeting the high as our draw on liquidity, and as you can see here, the price eventually reached and broke through that high. For that particular monthly candle, you would have maintained a bullish directional bias as the draw on liquidity was higher. During that month, you would primarily focus on long setups, particularly for short-term and intraday trading opportunities. However, as mentioned earlier, you wouldn't completely rule out counter trades, but you'd manage your risk accordingly. With around 20 trading days in a month, excluding bank holidays, NFP and CPI days, you would have plenty of opportunities to capitalize on this bullish directional bias and position yourself in alignment with it. You can see that this monthly candle closed above and within the range of the previous candle. When price closes above a candle's range, that candle becomes a key level for future price testing and reactions. As the next monthly candle opens, you would anticipate price 
to first retrace to either the open or high of the previous candle. This suggests a bearish bias for the first half of the month with expectations of bearish price movement until the candle's open or high is tested. Once this level is reached, your bias would shift into bullish and price is likely to find support and move higher. This approach applies a logical and dynamic perspective to price action. Now, looking at the next monthly candle, we see that the price has already tested the open of the previous candle, confirming it as a key level. With that test completed, your directional bias would now favour upward expansion, potentially forming a higher high. As the next monthly candle opens, you would expect higher prices as the prior candle has closed in an upward direction. Your bias would remain bullish for the next monthly candle and the same principle would apply to subsequent candles. You'll notice that for the first time in three months, a candle closed inside another range and formed a large wick. This signals bearish sentiment as wicks often indicate weakness or a lack of momentum. Based on these factors, you would anticipate a bearish directional bias for the next monthly candle. Similarly, when a candle closes below the open of a prior candle and takes out liquidity or tests a key level, it becomes a bearish order block. At the next monthly candle's open, you would look for a retest of that level, followed by price expanding lower. Your bias would shift towards the monthly candle's range low, or liquidity targets, as demonstrated on the chart. By applying this logical framework consistently across all monthly candles, you can see how profitable this approach can be, even without integrating other concepts. This example shows how to use the monthly chart to establish a clear directional bias and identify our draw on liquidity. Now let's shift our focus to the weekly chart to examine the same price action from a broader perspective. You can observe that the significant highs and lows where price made key reversals and expansions are actually the monthly CRT highs and lows. Notice how the price purged this low with the current candle only to close back inside the range. As the weekly candle opens, you would expect higher prices. You can see the price steadily pushed upwards for several weeks indicating a bullish trend. Once the price closed above the key level, that high became pivotal. This is because this high took out liquidity and now price is going to use this high as a key level and test it and expand from here. Such key levels are either called mitigation blocks or breaker blocks. Looking ahead, you would expect the price to retrace to this key level, find support, and expand from there. Remember, each weekly candle contains five trading days, providing opportunities to align trades with your directional bias. By now, you've already established your monthly directional bias, and the weekly chart has helped refine it further. You can use this to trade within the week, leveraging the analysis to improve accuracy in capturing liquidity and maintaining a strong directional position. Now, returning to the price action, you can see that after testing and retracing to this key level, we would expect bullish price movement for the following week. As the price expanded higher and closed above this candle, it became another key support level, signaling continued bullish momentum. When the price closes above the significant highs, it confirms bullish sentiment, just as when it closes below, it indicates a bearish trend. For example, when price closed above this high, it formed an FEG, filled it, and expanded upwards. Then, after forming a monthly CRT and reversing, the price closed back inside, shifting the directional bias towards the monthly CRT low, indicating a bearish trend. This process of using key levels on logical price action repeats consistently throughout this analysis. Now, as I said before, 
the daily chart is primarily utilized by short-term and intraday traders. You will apply the same concept here to analyze price action and establish your directional bias for the day. You'll build on the analysis that you've already conducted on the monthly and weekly charts, refining it further on the daily chart to help identify your draw on liquidity. The process follows a logical framework. We'll employ concepts like CRT, dealing ranges, CRT market structure, order flow, IPDA data ranges, weekly profiles, market profiles, and other tools to analyze price action on the higher timeframes like the weekly, monthly, and daily charts, ultimately reaching a conclusion. As an intraday trader, your goal is to establish a directional bias for the day, trade in that direction, and anticipate where the daily candle is likely to head or close. This is your core objective. These are the various functions of the higher timeframes, from the monthly down to the daily. You should take note of their unique characteristics and purposes, understanding how each serves your overall strategy. Now this video went on a lot longer than expected, so in next week's video, I'll cover time frame alignment in full detail. This video pretty much was just time frame selection, but this will give you a solid foundation for trading CRT profitably. However, this won't be the end of the series. I anticipate at least another 10 episodes to cover everything thoroughly. That said, with the knowledge that you've gained so far, you should already be able to navigate the market in a profitable and logical way. If you haven't done so already, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel to not miss out on future content. I do upload an indicator video every Wednesday and an ICT concepts video every Sunday. I'm currently in the middle of my mini series on CRT or candle range theory and this is what I trade on a day to day basis. If you'd like to keep up to date with my trades, follow me on Twitter or join my telegram. Thanks for watching. Till next time, happy trading.